Hello, welcome to the Sanford Edible Garden Trail. Now, if you've been following us for a while, you'll know that the trail is all about sharing information between gardeners so that we can learn a little bit more and feel more encouraged to grow more food in our backyards. So today we're right smack bang in the middle of Sanford Valley and we're at um, Trent's Garden. Trent, thank you very much for having us. And today we're going um, to have a look. Trent's a backyard gardener, so my favorite kind of people. <laughs> and we're gonna um, ask lots of questions, try to work out some of your secrets for this beautiful garden and um, make our way around this kind of area. And we'll just, and we'll see, we'll just kind of, we'll flow with it. That seems to be the way that we film here. Let's just start off. Fantastic. So, Thanks, Suzanne. <laughs> Thank you for thanks having for, us. Thanks for having me in your <laughs> back, my backyard. <laughs> All right, so I would like to start here by asking you about these strawberries. Well, okay. the strawberries are all grown from runners. Uh, basically, I have another strawberry patch over there, which every year I will collect the runners, usually when the weather gets a little cooler. Okay. And I will dig them out and transplant them here. Uh, I do find that the runners grow best. They produce the most strawberries. Um, and as the plant gets older, they do produce far less. Yeah. Um, so I, I always relocate my strawberries. Okay. Uh, so from one bed to the other. Um, so you would keep this bed here, like for a few years, but then the runners that come from here, you'll put in a new spot. Yep, so next year, maybe around April, they will um, send out a heap of runners. You've I won't show you the runners, but I'll show you some of the strawberries. <laughs> so. You can see there's quite a few flowers on here, quite a bit of fruit, um, and the size of the fruit will diminish with, with the age of the plant. So um, if I was to let this go, for example, this would just mat that whole area and become a whole carpet over yeah. the garden. So you don't have to dig them out. You can just, just let it go them. crazy, uh, and it ultimately becomes a living mulch. Yeah. Um, but if you want the fruit, definitely recommend going for the runners. Yeah. Um, and how um, how much fruit do you get? And when does I the could fruit? Pick, if you, it's I probably could, one variety, or you've got. A, yeah, I don't even know what know. variety because okay. I I acquire plants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this would have just started with with a handful of plants, and I've okay. just over the years keep transplanting, and they keep growing. And so, how what months are you getting the fruit? Uh, now. Uh, around August, July, uh, and I'll transplant around April. Okay. Uh, well, it looks beautiful. Or whenever the weather, the, the heat of the, the days die down a little bit and the cool comes in a bit. Yeah. Now, are you having any problems with pests here? If I put strawberries in the ground, I have things dig them up. I've had to I put them in a raised I bed. don't. I oh, know you've had a bit of yeah. trouble. I seem to have okay luck. I will get strawberries that get eaten out by, by slugs or something like that. But generally speaking, I produce more than I need, so therefore okay. I might get a few taken and I'll just collect the good ones. Okay. Um, so I don't have a bad problem with pests. Yeah. Do you get brush turkeys around here? Uh, no. I okay. have a Kelpie dog. All right. Aha, uh -huh, the <laughs> And secret. she keeps the, the okay. scrub turkeys at bay. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they do come through every day, but she keeps them out of the garden. They don't get enough they time get, to, yeah, to okay. scratch out and destroy. Ah, so the secret there is have a dog. The yeah. locals will know that, yeah, the um, brush turkeys or scrub turkeys are a big problem around here, but people outside of our area are going to be like, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. They, they dig up the ground and they, they, they try to eat your sweet potatoes and it's just one of those things we have to work out. I here, know, so. I've had them before, yeah. uh, pre-dog. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so. we've got a big area here, so I want to show everybody as much as we can. Let's make our way this way. Now, we're on a slope. We and, are. And... Um, that would pose its own challenges, I imagine, with the water. Uh, down the... Well, you'll notice that all my gardens here, I've mounded up the soil and made a, a raised bed. So right here, I've got the front bed is raised, the bed behind it is raised, and I'm not so fussed about the fruit trees behind that. But what this does is, if we have no rain for a month, the soil will not absorb a 20 mil downpour that we might get. So the water will flow down the hill, uh, enter the, the little ditch, and it'll allow the moisture to seep in a good, you know, 10, 15, uh, or 
10 to 15 mil below the soil so it actually gets to where the roots are yeah, opposed okay. to uh, trying to water on top. Um, what we might do is Chris, Christine's filming today. Thanks Chrissy. We've got Kerry here who's taking photos and she writes our, new, our, our articles. Do you want to have a, look, a closer look? So Tim, can you actually show us because I think this will be really interesting to people how you've designed the bed. So this is the ditch you were talking about. Yep. So you've created a ditch here so the water's going to flow down here Yep. Come here and, and then and, sort of absorb into the bed. And I said 10, 10 15 mils before. I actually meant to say uh, 100 mil to 150 mil. Yeah. Uh, so that, and that's where the roots are. Basically, growing veggies, you need 200 mil, 300 mil of good soil, and you need that to, kept, to be kept moist. And I find that's a perfect amount. You don't need half a metre of soil to grow veggies. Yeah. Uh, if you can stab a pitchfork in there, quite easily that's nice and soft uh, I find that's a, a good amount okay. so I, I really try and focus on just maintaining that sort of depth of soil add manures um, add compost add anything that's actually going to break down at the end of the day okay. anything organic I find is, is good if a banana tree falls down I'll actually stick that in the ground put some manure on top put some mulch on top and walk away in six months time I'm not planting it. So there's no other fertilizers that you're adding here? I don't add fertilizers here. Sometimes <laughs> if I start a brand new bed I'll add gypsum which okay. is basically calcium uh, yeah. which is one of the necessary uh, nutrients for plants. Yeah. Um, other than that I find the manures add the nitrogen um, and then there's phosphorus and potassium, which I don't seem to have a problem with. It all seems to go really well with just organic material yeah. in there. And same with sugarcane mulch. That will actually uh, break down very, very quickly as well. So I don't use the sugarcane mulch on the, on the fruit trees. I go with the wood chip. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that lasts a lot longer. Um, and it does the same job, really. It retains the moisture as well. Yeah. Um, and it's a bit cheaper on the pocket. <laughs> yes, <for laughs> I don't sure. spend the money on sugar cane on the fruit tree. Yeah, you don't have many weeds there. Have you weeded before we've come? Or no, is this I, how it usually I, looks? Yeah, you can probably see that's a plum tree there around the base. You can see some old news uh, sure. cardboard. Mm -hmm. So often before I mulch, I'll, I'll lay cardboard okay. down. Or if I don't have cardboard, I'll lay newspaper down. Yeah, and uh, mulch as well. So obviously <laughs> weeds are like all other plants. They need sunlight. Yeah. Cut out sunlight. Yeah. problem gone until it breaks down yeah and, and then you start yeah. over so that's one thing you will notice in my garden is you do not see bare dirt if you see bare dirt you you simply need to add mulch yeah um yeah that that would be one of the key things i would say if you're not going to add manures at least mulch it and cover it cover it okay i want to take out i know how many amazing plants there are along here so let's have a look first of all <laughs> what it, look at this contraption i know what? What's going on? I've gone this overboard. Is, it's absolutely <laughs> abundant though. Did you plant these cherry tomatoes or are these? No, they're all self seed. Self -seed? I don't, once you have cherry tomatoes, you do not need to uh, <laughs> plant true. cherry tomatoes. Yes. Uh, you can probably see 50 on the ground already. Yes. So what will happen, this plant will actually die off. They all, they all become diseased at the end of the day. You'll see all brown leaves. So throughout its growth, I'll always pick off dead, dying, diseased leaves, any any brown growth. Um, and basically I start that process from the bottom. So I start that from the ground. So you can actually see all the trunks through there. You don't yeah. see too many leaves. And as the tomatoes grow, the branches become bigger, they become longer, and I keep pruning, 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 so pruning. pruning. And now I'm at the end. I've decided I'm not pruning anymore. It's once it stops producing here, I'm done. Yeah. And I could, I, I could pick a pun on a day for yeah. months. You'd have enough for your yeah. whole, all your neighbors. I, your whole I story. don't even know. There's probably eight tomato plants there, and I, I would have started with hundreds. They all just come up. Yeah. And then there'll be some outstanding ones, and I'll say, "You're a keeper. You're a keeper. You're a keeper." Yeah. Um. And do you and move just, them? Would you then no, move them? No, no, I, I, it's them? ideal if you try and have them a little bit separated, but I just go through a culling process. Okay. So I won't cull them all at once. I'll just maybe let 50 grow and then I'll cull down to 20 yeah. and then 10. 
And that's where this structure comes in as well, because I didn't start with all of this structure <laughs> and don't feel you need to make a structure like this to grow successful cherry tomatoes. Um, but I've started with a bit of Rio. You might not see that, but anyway, there's a bit of a Rio, a few stakes, a bit of wire mesh, and before long, it outgrows that. Uh, and that's where I then added on top of that again. Yeah, I really um, love it. We'll make sure we get a photo of this. <laughs> and and I creativity. use the, the string as well. The string works really well. You, you end up winding the tomato plant around okay. the string and obviously a tomato is a vine, so they just like to, to, to creep. Yeah. Um, but you can still see there's heaps of flowers still yeah, on the thing. Yeah, it's still going. It's still going. Um, and so you'll notice there'll be a big empty space there once that goes. Yeah. So once again, I might come back, add some manure, mulch it. And, and then, then And then whenever the time comes, I'll decide what to plant there. If spring's coming, I might put oh. some cucumbers and I'll reuse that. So if I grow cucumbers next, I'll redo that structure and I'll make the make cucumbers, the cucumbers creep grow. up the structure as well. Great. Uh, and they grow in the same fashion. They're a creeper yeah. and you twine it around. Um, Fantastic. And then you got too many cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Let's let's make our way here so we can see all the various things that you're growing. You've got um, onions. Here. Onions, yes. Onions. Are these, from, these are all from seeds. They're all from seeds. Mm -hmm. So seeds are the way to go with growing vegetables. Okay. I find uh, often you'll get we'll keep, a thousand we'll keep seeds in a pack, so yep. you just sprinkle them like crazy. Keep them moist. They'll germinate and you just have to thin them out. I probably haven't thinned them out the best there, so the onions will end up pushing each other out a bit, mm -hmm. and then next year I'll go, maybe I'll thin them out a bit more. <laughs> but you're planting straight into, you've got some eggplant here that you've staked. Yeah, the eggplants go really well. This is they, a, this is okay. the second year we've had the eggplant. Yeah. So I didn't really realize they were perennial. Yeah, well, I think they're not meant to be. So. But the, up here they seem to be. So, so here I, they are, they, might, they just keep growing. You've got a beautiful one. I do. I, I just happen to have a pair of secateurs <laughs> in my back pocket. <laughs> so these. Ah, uh, yeah. Doesn't look that pretty there. <laughs> Looks awesome it. there. But that's the size of my hand. Decent size. It's, you saw that in the shop. Yeah. You might not pick that and you'll go through the whole batch. If you grow that, you'll realise that that is Perfect. a beautiful yeah. eggplant. Uh, we're obsessed with looks, but homegrown, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Better. You know, I think one of the things I learnt with eggplant was that um, to find um, the vegetables that grow really well in our area, and I just discovered by chance that eggplant grew so easily, did no effort, and it grows so really, everyone in our area who likes eggplant, you could stick eggplant in and grow it. Yeah, right? oh, it's without so question. easy. Without and then you've question. got organic eggplant that you can't access and at an organic store anyway. And that, that one plant would easily produce 30, 40 yeah. eggplants. Yeah, wow. So once again, with, with eggplants, keeps... I would, there's another one there too, I would, I would pick that too. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's ready to eat. And you're better off picking it and let it produce more eggplant. Um, yeah, there's no shortage of eggplant. Oh. Yeah. And that's the beauty of gardening too, I find, is is I would never go to the shop and buy 20 eggplant. But because I've grown 20 eggplant, I'm now Googling recipes <laughs> on how do you make baba ganoush. <laughs> you, know, like, you, end up, you end up using it more, yeah. I find, uh, yeah. opposed to buying it, sitting in the fridge, and then you waste it. Yeah. So, yeah, I find growing it for sure. And you'd, yeah, you'd simply never buy that many eggplants no. in the shop. So um, we've got, you've basically got two rows here and then you've got some fruit trees behind it. Correct. So is this is the first working? time I've planted in this one. Okay. So you've done the same system, you've done the ditch. And then how, yep. what, what soil, well you said you had gypsum, you put cow, yep. um, horse manure. So, so our some... soil here is predominantly DK, decomposed granite which isn't too bad. And we have a small amount of topsoil. Um, I find adding, once again, the, you only need 200 mil of good soil. So add manure, uh, and I find that enriches the soil nicely. Yeah. Um, 
the and peas I just are... don't have any dramas with that simple method. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you ask the question, what fertilizer do you use? And so ultimately, yeah. Well, that's the answer that I like. The idea that you have to keep buying stuff from the, the store. You yeah. Know? I just think, oh, try if you can do it at home. It's yeah, exactly, good. It's exactly. And things Your like peas lettuce. Are very it, happy there. If that's not we'll a, have a look that, 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 that's almost ready to go that lettuce so I've already come through and cut that lettuce to the ground and that's the okay. second time it's come around mm. and uh, I'm, I'm done with that basically so this we got looks... tatsoi in there we got mini cabbage we got some kale I've never buy kale in the shop so, so easy to now that I, and that's oh. mizuna which is a Japanese lettuce you're focusing on there and the beauty of this is you make a salad, you come out and pick a multitude of different varieties of lettuce, yeah. mix it all together, and it becomes such a more flavoursome salad than you would ever buy in a shop by buying a bag of lettuce. Absolutely. These look so healthy. Yes. You see this, Chrissy? Look, look at the beautiful colours here. They're, right, so they're a silver bean. A silver bean, um, all different. Bright whites is what they've called it, but and then it's... looks amazing in a stir fry with the nice red colour. Mm, just and so once abundant. again, that that small amounts just from seed. So I would have used a quarter of a pack of seeds there. Yeah. And uh, and you're not planting into seedling, I mean, to punnets. You just no direct seed, straight direct into the seed. Ground. And the bigger the seed, also uh, you don't need to yeah. plant into. And this time of year also where it's cooler, it's easier to keep the soil moist as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so germination's a lot easier. But there are tricks as well. If you're growing in summer, you can put a board over the seeds. So for example, a seed doesn't actually need sunlight. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so you, it, it ultimately needs warmth and moisture. Yeah. So as long as you keep that moist, they'll generally oh, germinate. Generally. Germinate. And um, you're in tank water here? That's correct. So are you watering these often? Well, I'm a little precious with the tank water because you yeah. never know when it's going to run out. So I minimise the watering um, and rely a lot on rainwater and hence the little ditch to try well, and... This is working very effectively Yeah, it, then, it does make a big up. difference. But exactly. the mulch, mulching is, is also key there. It, it retains the, the moisture significantly. Mm. Um, like if I was to remove this little patch of mulch here, you can see I've actually mulched quite thick. That's a big, thick, but straight away that that, that, that soil's moist. Yeah, we had rain so, yesterday here, so that's held it really nice. So, and so. that keeps it in well. And also with the ditch, if you try and water directly on top of the mulch, it can drain off. So, you know, when you do water, it, it stays in that, in that vicinity. Mm. Well, you've got a wonderful variety of veggies here. Yes. Um, let's make our way up here. So we've got... Did you want a quick sneak peek at the uh, mulberry? <laughs> yeah, let's do, it's, let's do that. Let's, because it's such a beautiful looking tree. So as you can, can see... You, I'll jump do in you want to jump in there and show us? It's, so I'm not sure if the camera can see, but they're, they're chockers. There'd be 20 mulberries on that. And that's just one small branch on that whole bush. Uh, so very shortly they'll start to change colour. You can even see maybe uh, oh, a slight little tinge of colour there, but shortly they'll ripen up and out comes the fig birds and the <laughs> king parrots. Yes. So I get up before they do and come and pick them and whack them in a container and put them in the freezer. Oh, great idea. So uh, otherwise the birds will be, or the birds will yeah. be here regardless. Yes. But Providing you get there early, you, you, you get your own feed and they get the rest. <laughs> well, your system here is working because that's a very happy tree. Yes, so, so we did have a lot of weeds through here as well. So uh, I'm trying a new technique with the cardboard. Mm -hmm. You can see the, I've laid cardboard directly on top of the weeds. I didn't remove the weeds. Mm -hmm. I've, they weren't big enough to need to whip a snip. I just laid directly on top and the forest mulch or the wood chip goes straight on top of that. Um, because I'm on a slope, you want to use wood chip, not sugar cane mulch, because uh, it'll wash it away. It can slide off very easy. Well, let's make our way here, and as we do, check out yeah. this. <laughs> this is just, I mean, abundance. A citrus tree is just represents abundance like nothing else <laughs> to me. It's just beautiful. 
they're actually extremely really? hard to peel so oh. we end up cutting them in half juicing them and making ice blocks out of them um freezing oh, the juice idea. and okay. making ice blocks um like normal. all other fruit trees they generally produce all at once and you get a glut yes so and that's so that's how you store it that's correct so it. we'll we'll mix these with the oranges as well mm -hmm. you might even put a, a bit of grapefruit you you make it how you like it basically mm -hmm. uh and then freeze them in ice ice block makers and they're there for however long that's a want. great tip um so up here we've got i can see we've got some rosella that's gone to seed we've got a few more beds a few things that are going to seed yep so these this, beds here are just waiting so i yep. think one i grew pumpkin uh this year and once that died off i chopped it up chucked it on bit of manure bit of mulch this one was just grass clippings um once again it's just organic material just okay. going to break down i wouldn't even know what it looks like in there oh, it's a bit oh, wet actually a bit wet but anyway turns to dirt plant food so you're letting them just rest for a little bit and then you'll put some seed out. Is yeah, right? I'll, I haven't decided. You haven't decided. <laughs> so I, I make it up as I go basically. But one thing I will do is, is I'll, I'll grab seeds and just hoik. <laughs> uh, and whether that's from a basil, this is an old basil, mm -hmm. uh, I will let it grow. So I won't chop that down. Yeah. I'll let it grow and I'll, I'll grab the seeds and you won't see them on the camera, but there's all little seeds yep. in there. So that's one plant I will not grow. I will also not grow coriander either. Oh, when you say not grow, uh, you, you won't buy? You I won't, won't it, buy it, it will self-seed. It will self-seed. Self self so I don't care where it comes up. Is that up. some coriander there? Is that what this little yep. one is? Yep, okay. that'll be self-seeded, self-seeded yep. coriander. Yep. And coriander is one of those, uh, Foods you either hate or love. <laughs> <laughs> so the same with the rosella. You've got lots of rosella yeah, here. Yeah, rosella. You'll throw them out. I yeah, they will definitely self seed as well. Yeah, these ones I did grow specifically in a little pot and then transplant right. them, but I didn't realise how berserk they went. <laughs> now I know a little story about you with the rosella. <laughs> it's a beautiful story. It right? is. Did you um? You, you mentioned to me a while ago that you had all this rosella fruit, but you just couldn't be bothered turning it I into jam. I couldn't be bothered making jam. And I'd prefer this... to be out here than in the kitchen. So what was your strategy? <laughs> uh, you I, I, I took a nice little photo of some beautiful rosellas and offered it up on the, uh, the, the give page. We've got a buy nothing group buy in nothing our area group. where you can give things away to people. So. And um, before long, I had half a dozen people turn up. <laughs> So they were happy to get the fruit. They were they happy were to happy. make the jam. They were happy. Which is... And uh, every one of them virtually offered a, a, <laughs> or promised a bottle of jam back when they were finished, which I didn't hold them to, but uh, it was a great way to try my own fruits. <laughs> I call that a win-win. I think that's a fantastic strategy. You grow it, somebody else makes it, and you get to have it back. And so while you're looking at that, you'll oh, I've still got the plant there, but basically you will get seeds in here. That was not a good example, but basically, here we go. Here's a better one. So you will see the seeds. There's oh, yeah. the seeds there. You can see that. So. And you only need a few plants, don't you? Oh, you. Yeah. I grew ten. And <laughs> you must have had so much. I needed. Fruit. I needed twenty people to collect it, <laughs> not six. <laughs> so, and as you can appreciate, just one flower. I just got ten seeds there. Yeah. Can I have that, some? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, Chrissy wants some tea. Uh, there's we'll plenty to go around. Great. So. Let's make our way here. You can see, um, Chen's got this, um, it's really hard to capture it, but you can see, maybe we can scan back where we've walked, Christine. We can see that all those rows we just walked, basically using that swale yep. for all of your veggies, and then the fruit trees are down at the bottom. And, um, and then... Once we've looked there, you can see we've got mango trees that are fruiting or flowering already. I should say beautiful papayas. At this section over here, I'd love us to get to this bit if we can. <laughs> so, um, this is my poop pile. <laughs> 
There's no okay. excuse to walk in this accidentally, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, can you tell us a little bit about this and about the styrofoam boxes and what's going on there? Because Yeah, so basically, as I mentioned before, I use manure. I don't use fresh manure. I compost it. Okay. So basically, I compost it in this old rainwater tank, which I've chopped into quarters. Uh, that might take three or four months. And then I will use that directly on the soil, on the plants. Uh, and in fact, those three yeah. polystyrofoam boxes here are Look. all filled with straight horse manure. That's uh, been composted down after it was composted? Yep, that's oh. correct. So, so if, if all of that gardening down there is too much for you and you just want to grow some lettuce, potting mix, polystyrofoam box, sprinkle seed. So this is where I would have sprinkled, say, 100 seeds in there, kept it moist, um, and within, within a week it germinates, keep the water up for the first two weeks, and basically a month and a half later you've got your edible lettuce. So this is the stage that I would eat this lettuce. Um, I often would pick a third at a time, and by the time you want your next batch of lettuce, you pick the next third, and then your final batch, your next third, you've finished the whole lot, and the initial third is ready to pick again. Uh, and that saves the bitterness of lettuce by preventing it from getting too old. And that can reoccur two or three times. So you get two or three pickings out of the one batch of lettuce. And in such a small space. In such a small space. So the, the other benefit is if, if it's summertime and you think it's too hot, you can pick that up yeah. and protect it somewhere where it doesn't get western sun. Yeah. Vice versa, if there's a storm coming and you're precious about it, you, you can, can move, it. move it under cover. It's a great idea. And and that that's great for the, the first time up with, oh, well, I do it all the time anyway, but yeah. if you don't want to get a shovel and move dirt, move manures, that's the go, Good I find. Too. I'll germinate other seeds that method as well, whether yeah. it's capsicums, cucumbers, um, the polystyrofoam, is a great insulator as well. Uh, so if the sun's beating on the side, it definitely uh, maintains a little more cool f on the soil. And um, we can make our way here. So you've got a few different varieties. And yeah, more lettuce, more silver beet, more lettuce. <laughs> just another garden bed, of course. Another garden bed. So that is on the deco, which is, is terrible to grow directly on. But when that lettuce is done, I will then empty the entire contents there when that one's done i will move that along somewhere else but basically i dump it there throw you can see i've got coriander coming up like crazy so that's all coriander seed uh and spinach once again uh, and that's how you've built that bed up that's it's just yeah thrown, so thrown that would be that would probably only be a hundred mil worth of of soil added to that and as you can see, we eat a lot of, we're, we're like rabbits. We a lot eat, of greens. <laughs> we eat our greens. Well, I think this looks beautiful. And just as a decorative garden. Yeah. I love edible gardens. Yeah. It's a decorative garden. I think it's gorgeous. And you get less weeds. The more the more condensed you plant, the less weeds you get growing. Yeah. So in that area, I actually haven't mulched. And it's just through the beautiful. pure volume of plants, cutting out the sunlight to the soil, that keeps the weeds out as well. So, well, Thank you for showing us your garden. We're going to thank keep you. chatting. We're going to do a, sh a few uh, <laughs> shorter videos in a moment. Um, but thank you for showing us your beautiful garden. I could hear the kookaburras just then. Hopefully yeah. that... Heckling me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you like the trail, hopefully you do. Hopefully you've got lots of ideas from um, Trent. I've already picked up a few <laughs> tips. Um, please follow us along. Every two weeks we go and visit a new garden. And um, it's all about sharing information and encouraging all of us to grow a little bit more. So please tell your friends and tell other people about the trail and we can all keep growing together. Thank you. See you later. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Suzanne. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs>